to the Zoltaeus Gaming Channel. I am your host, Zoltaeus. Here with an episode of RimWorld. So I'm not actually going to do gameplay, unless that's what you guys want. But what I am going to do is kind of put some ideas out there. And yes, every idea in the world, as far as RimWorld, has been thought of, right? But I'm going to put some out there for some of you who may not, you know... Uh, frequent the RimWorld pages like through Reddit or Wiki or anything like that. Put some out there. If you've already seen these ideas, don't at me. I'm just putting some ideas out there that I thought would be very, very interesting. Obviously, mods are, are a big deal. As you can see, I've got, you know, quite a few, right? But these don't necessarily require mods. Now, you can set them up how you want and add mods to these to make it easier or harder or you know whatever like individuality is is definitely one of those mods that allows you to customize the gameplay in many different ways when it comes to your pawns and that can actually bring some spice to some of these some of these ideas some Mods that will make that interesting. Like I said, individuality is is one of those mods. Uh, definitely something that spices up how pawns interact, how they start, new stuff that you'll find when they recruit, things like that. Uh, it's going to add a lot of new variables to pawns that you'll either have to interact with, try to recruit, or that will attack you. Next is the Moody mod. There's also a different one you can, there, there are several different ones you can use, but ones that show, you know, mood. The reason I say that this could be uh, a good one without, you know, drastically changing gameplay is it makes it a lot easier to visualize how your, how your pawns are doing. The, the more often they break down, the more likely they are to do things like, I don't know, say you're building stuff up for power, chem fuel, stuff like that, and they just decide, I'm going to go on a destruction spree, and the first thing that I'm going to do is light fire to the chem fuel. Uh, th things that you, you may want to avoid, right? So, Moody is is a easy way to visualize how everyone's mood is going. Um, yes, it looks like a pretty cumbersome thing, but it doesn't have to be up all the time. You can hit that arrow and uh, it, it'll minimize. But yeah, I mean, definitely something that will, will help in a lot of the different gameplays, but specifically the ones that uh, I'm going to suggest that can be done through vanilla and you don't want to modify it too much. Moody is definitely a good one. All right, so another one is quality of building. Uh, it actually shows you the differences in things that are made, so you don't have to constantly hover over everything to figure out if it's, you know, normal or better or worse, right? So as you can see here, so this stuff right here is probably either poor or it's not going to be normal, but, you know, you can immediately tell when something is substandard, right? So, you know, just little things that will help improve mood. And, and that's the kind of stuff that we want. Uh, the other thing that I will say, uh, Corey, is definitely one to consider. It does change gameplay a bit because now you don't have to rely on constantly mining stuff uh, outside of, you know, just big deposits of stone. You can mine it and you can get, you know, you can get lucky and get almost anything through there, which kind of makes it break it a little bit, but uh, it's still a way to get those chunks without having to rely on, you know, oh, well, I don't have marble in, in this map. I'm going to have to go to different, I'm going to have to go to a different tile to find, to find marble, send an entire party out there. All right, so realistic rooms. Realistic rooms, it's, it's not a game breaker. It's definitely going to change a few things. Your, your pawns are going to be happier with smaller rooms. Some people uh, would argue that that's a, a game changer. Eh, 
I don't think so. I, I think having rooms that better match what we are used to in real life, especially when you're trapped on you know a random world that, as you can see in this picture, it's snowing outside. Uh, just having a room that's warm or room that's cool during the summertime, it doesn't have to be super, super huge. Uh, and in, in, in vanilla rim world, I mean, you, you're, you're looking at, you have to have like a five by five for it to be like moderate, uh, aesthetically pleasing. And it's just like, really? Uh, that's, that's huge. Like that's, that's bigger than my master bedroom in the grand scheme of things. And so, you know, little things like that. Uh, I definitely use it just because I prefer to to start small, and if I have space later, yeah, I'll, I'll build the more extravagant rooms. But you know, I, I think uh, realistic rooms uh, makes it a little bit easier to start out, and it gives you options in late snap out. So this is one of those things where if you have pawns with uh, decent social abilities, they can actually snap people who go on mental breakdowns out of their mental breakdown. Uh, this is a very nice mod. It doesn't all, I mean, it's not like it's automatic. You, you're, if your pawn has a, a 20 social that he'll automatically, he or she will automatically get that person out of their mental break. But at least it gives it an opportunity to, you know, have a pawn go to the pawn with a mental breakdown and, you know, calm them down. You know, we, we do that in real life, right? Why, why shouldn't we be able to do that in RimWorld? And last but not least, more planning. So, depends on how you like to do it. I personally, I like to kind of set bases up uh, to do, to, to kind of plan out, you know, where, where am I gonna put my walls? Where am I gonna put my housing? Where am I gonna put the kitchen? You know, all that kind of stuff. This gives you a lot more options, it gives you, the ability to plan out that base uh, and I don't know about you guys I, I I try to you know kind of fly by the seat of my pants when I when I do some of these uh, rim world uh, starts but sometimes I, j I literally just spend an hour before my pawns barely break out of their uh, escape pods to just all right where on this map do I want to go let's uh, all right I'm gonna put my walls here all right you know so this gives me a lot more options to kind of customize where I put stuff instead of just using the white by gray lines or boxes to to create outlines you now can be like oh okay well I can designate blue to be my freezer areas uh, and kitchen areas I can have red be you know housing areas I can have green be you know workshop areas so on and so forth you, you can do it however you want and this just gives you those options so We're talking about the ruler must survive idea. So what I meant by ruler must survive doesn't actually have, we don't have to be, you know, we don't have to be royalty to do this, right? It, it's, it's just a, it's just an expression. So what I mean by that is out of all of the people, so it doesn't matter how you start, you will always have at least one uh, pawn to start any game. So it doesn't matter if you're Crash Landed, Lost Tribe, Rich Explorer, Naked Brutality. Uh, I also have Abandoned Androids and then of course Factory Entrepreneur because I have uh, the Rim Factory mods uh, and Abandoned Androids because I have the Androids mods. But it doesn't matter which one. See it says you start with three people, start with five, start with one, one, uh, three, so on and so forth. Crystalloids because I have the Crystalloid uh, mod. But you always start with at least one, right? So what I'm what I'm saying is one of those pawns, and you designated at the beginning of the game, must survive to end game. So how you do that is up to you. And you know, some people prefer save scumming uh, to prevent deaths. Some people play it natural. You can. I'm not going to tell you how to play the game, but the idea is. You pick one member, they must survive. But you, I mean, you can go to scenario uh, and you can edit what you start with, what you get, uh, taking out uh, 
incidences, ho however you guys want to set it up. Up to you guys. I just want the idea to be fun and, you know, because that's the whole point of games, right? But I also, you know, want you guys to challenge yourself as much as you want to challenge yourself or just have, you know, make it as easy as you guys want to make it. So, idea number one is Ruler Must Survive. Another idea that really doesn't require mods, specifically shaped buildings. So what I mean by that is everything has to have a specific shape. Yes, the idea is very basic, but you would be amazed at how hard it could be to build an entire base out of a specific shape. Even if we said, let's, uh, let's go, what, diamonds. Maybe diamonds uh, would be an interesting shape. And the nice thing about diamonds is even when you do diagonal walls, it still actually creates a wall. So, all right. So, here in RimWorld, as you can see, I've got uh, quite a colony going here. But if I were to, to build walls, it doesn't matter what, uh, it would have to, you know, if I wanted to do diamonds, this would be the shape of the building, diamond. Now, weirdly enough, this is enclosed. Uh, and, you know, where you put the door is up to you, doesn't matter. But, like, the entire colony, like, your, where you would put your, like, final wall, like, if you had this kind of wall uh, enclosing your, your colony, it would have to be this shape. Any building you made, like any of these, would have to be diamond shaped uh, in this case. Uh, any, you know, enclosure you made, like this right here, I use as a, uh, a temporary buffer uh, behind a wall because I'm not a super big fan of kill boxes, but you know, they, they serve their purpose. But I put my guys behind here with these, you know, with these walls and, and short walls, uh, panel walls, and then shields. You would have to do the same with anything that you built. So that's the purpose behind specifically shaped buildings. It would be very difficult to accomplish but you could make some really aesthetically pleasing looking uh, colonies doing that. And I think that would be very interesting to see how feasible something like that is. Now, the next idea is drug farm. So what's so original about that, Zoltaeus, you say? Uh, this one specifically, the idea is to the attempt to automate it by year three. So what does automate mean? Well, it can mean whatever you want. Uh, in this case, automate to you may mean uh, something like, where, where are those? Uh, there they are. Uh, using the miscellaneous robots mod uh, hauling bot cleaning bot uh, and then when you go to robots plus you get a kitchen bot builder bot er bot omni bot uh, it can even be uh, with androids so like android tears uh, android plus vanilla so it can it can be that way if you want, if, if, if your thought process of automating, it could also be even, you know, a rim, rim factory. Uh, but automating it by year three. So everything is constant. You, you have to do very little uh, hands-on with the pawns by year three and the attempt to make five million by year five. So five million, let's let's say silver. Five million silver by year five. Uh, you could even go as far as to have a colony worth five million by year five. But this is all only selling drugs. It can be any drugs you want. You can set up 
your new colony however you want. It can you can give yourself any any starting you you can start yourself with anything whether it's uh, you know forced health conditions. A lot of people when they do drug farms like to force them to be addicted to drugs. Uh, permanent game condition. So when you go to permanent game condition, you can you know have it to where it's always an aurora, sunblock, anything like that. You guys can you guys can set this up however you want. Give yourself any uh, research that you want. Doesn't matter. However you guys want to set this up, it's up to you. Limit the number of pawns that you have by end game. So, how far can you get with just 10 pawns? Uh, how far can you get with just 5 pawns? How far can you get with just 3 pawns? So, can you get to end game with a specific number of pawns? Once again, a very easy vanilla uh, Rimworld idea to, to utilize. Up to you how you do it. Uh, once again, you can set your scenario up however you want. Uh, but I've, I've always constantly, like you saw in previous gameplay that I, that I had up on this video, uh, I was at something like 16 uh, pawns. And it's very easy to get up to like 25, 30 because, you know, you capture, you recruit, people just randomly join you. Look into it from a minimalist perspective. How far can I get to end game with just like five pawns? The next idea is how much can you earn making blank in three years. Uh, so what I mean by blank is how much can you make making parkas uh, in three years? How much can you can you make making assault rifles in three years? How much can you make making pistols in three years? You know, insert word here for blank. And this is something that I have never done because it's just so easy to to make stuff that you need for your colony, and then when it's no longer useful, it's like at you know less than fifty percent. It's just easy to sell it off. Well, what this is saying is you pick one thing. It's the only thing you can sell or trade, and you you know if you don't have a use for all the other stuff, you just destroy it. How much can you make? only doing that for three years then once you have you know challenged yourself for that three years can you make it to end game only making and trading that item now you you can make other things but only making money off of that one item can you take that to end game can you get to the end game with just making money off of that one item Always thought that was a good idea. I've never done it. And I, I think it would be a very interesting gameplay. But that's going to do it for this episode. Like and subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you in the next video.